What up, G? What up, H? What's going on, bro? It's all good, bro. Yeah, where we at, bro? What's going sure, on? Dude, it's just, doing? Can, can the summer just, like... The summer's already started, bro. It's, all, <laughs> it's already hot. So if it's just like this now, it's December, gonna, it's gonna be a hot-ass summer. Ah, but we should spend summer in summer cold, bro. Yeah, so where we at, bro? Episode? Finally, you can do the thing. <laughs> <laughs> the only time you can do the thing is when, it's the, same, man. when it's the same number on both sides. Yeah, yeah man. Cheese episode 33. Where are we? Right now, we are in Pretoria East. Yeah. We've never done Pretoria East this whole time. We've never done Pretoria East. So, first time in Pretoria East, which yeah. is pretty cool. And we're at, uh, what's the name of the place where we're sitting right now? It's Nala Kids Spot. Okay. Right, but I, and, and this, there must be a specific reason why we're actually here. Of course, but I think, but I think we should let the guest explain why. I think we should let the guest explain himself. Yeah. Sylvester, so oh Sly. You can call me whatever. <laughs> whatever that makes you sleep at night. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my fault. I'm good, bro. How are you doing? I don't know. First of all, welcome. Yeah. Welcome to, to the show. Thing. Welcome to Off the Record. <laughs> Who is Sylvester? Who is. Yeah. Uh, where, where is he from? Give us a little bit of a background of, of, of who know, this man I is. I can say I'm one of those born businessmen. It's, it's in my blood. It's yes. in, well, maybe trans in the family. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Most have. Knowing your family. <laughs> So yeah, I I started doing business while I was still at school. Mm-hmm. Okay. When I was in high school, I used to sell cigarettes to you know we, <laughs> we, we moved to the burbs yeah. and you know uh, it was it was quite tough. I grew up in a family where my dad used to run shops and yeah. stuff like that, and you okay. know over the weekend I'd help at, at the shop and then yeah. So during the week, I decided you know what. Maybe for me to get pocket money, I must do some business. Cool. Yeah. So I used to, I used to when, I used to take my pocket money, yeah. and then when my dad goes to buy his stock, I'll buy my stock of. <laughs> so we moved to the Burbs, and in the suburb where we lived, there was like still a lot of construction. You know, it was like a new yeah, development. Yeah. So those guys that work at the construction, I used to go and sell cigarettes. So yeah. you know, like maybe give on April or on every Friday, I'll come back at school early, go collect my money. So yeah. you know, that's how it started. And so you were already even giving credit when you were studying. <laughs> What else could I do? Because I went there and said, I'm selling cigarettes. They said, Ish, we can buy, but. Arna new. Arna new. Oh, yeah. So, Rikawana Friday. Yeah. I'm like, okay, maybe Friday, but when I looked at the building, I'm like, this building is still a bit far. Yeah. So, you know, maybe, the business is there, yeah. Yeah, maybe I must just. On Friday, I'm gonna get my money, otherwise, I'm gonna go crazy on this place. <laughs> yes. From selling cigarettes in high school. Yeah. Where did you go from there? Look. When I was doing metric, I was interested in music, so I started liking music a lot, and Good. eventually I became a DJ. That's the slide. I <laughs> so that, that's where I, I first met. That's, I first met yeah, you. Yeah, that's when that's when I met Henry, and then because we'd rock up at Hillview and Clapham, we'd go to all these high schools and say, "We've got sound. We can we can help call a party on a Friday and." Yeah. You know, it, it, everything just happened so quickly. We just rock up to the principal's office and say, we're going to do a party this Friday and the kids can raise money and stuff like that. And then we tune up a story and eventually says, okay, it's fine. Just do it. <laughs> as long as there's no chaos. And we, you know, that Friday, worked, yeah. at that time, there was no WhatsApp or Facebook or yeah, anything. It was like, mixed days. It was. It was probably mixed days. No, it, was, it wasn't. It wasn't even there. No. It was pages and cell phones. We had, we had pages. <laughs> yeah. We, we were walking around with the page as well. The beep, yeah. It just shows you a number that you must go to the pay phone. Then I go to the pay phone and go phone my friends, okay. The principal said wow. sharp and then, you know, and we didn't have a car then. We used to use like city council buses to go to this school, the taxis and, you know, it, yeah. was, it was one of those, the struggle was real. You're actually a big part of the Pretoria music movement starting when, when djs were becoming a thing mm. in pretoria why didn't you stay there like what, what happened with the whole music industry um, space look to, a lot of people still don't know what happened but just to set the record straight we recorded an album we took it to gallo record and then they listened to it and they said look this is rubbish music who plays music like this it sounds like jungle music <laughs> <laughs> you know it's not gonna work it's never gonna work yeah. Today, the very same sound, it's called Gom, Samakonini. Oh, yeah. 
it's I'm a piano. It's got like it's a base. It's a ba it's a base of what we were doing. Yeah. It's just that these days it has evolved to having like a piano. By then we used to have like a very strong bass guitar. Yeah. That was a signature, and then you oh. knew we just have a bass guitar and we turn the party upside down. Upside down. Yeah. Being a businessman, you, you you need to you need to think out of the box, and. Yeah. As much as you guys are into photography and doing videos, but you guys have to do something that no one else can do. Yeah. And you need to think on your feet. You need to think on the yeah. spot immediately. And be able to adapt. And be able to adapt. Adapting is, is part of the whole thing. Because if you don't adapt, you're going to be left behind. You have yeah. to change when others change. Mm. The planet is moving all the time. And if you keep on the same place and hoping you're just going to go with the planet <laughs> and then move with it, and back, it's not going to work. Yeah, by the time the planet comes back, a lot has been done yeah. Yeah, where it's almost like you're in jail the whole time. Yeah. And People put themselves into jail by their own thinking. What was it that made the the changes come? So what 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 makes you stop one thing and go into the next? Is it the market? Is it the so what forces that that change or that adaptability? One thing you need to understand about business: business always evolves and it changes. The market conditions changes. Mm -hmm. The people's perception about certain products and certain things changes. People's pockets and Endings change either for the good or the bad. Sure. So outside of music, what else have you done up to leading up to like this point in time? I moved to to the motor industry. Yeah. Started slowly as a salesman. I worked for, for Audi. I think then it was around about two thousand and five. Yeah. Uh, moved to Audi. Worked for Audi. Eventually, moved through the ranks. Uh, up the ranks and you know become uh, assistant manager and so on going up and eventually I just said you know what I'm sitting here if I look at the cars and the money that I'm actually making for this company because I I was then uh, doing their their marketing I was now sales sales and marketing manager mm -hmm. and I was doing all the marketing in the Pretoria branches all the Audis and yeah. you know, the billboards and whatever yeah then I decided, you know what, I'm making money for these guys, why don't I make money for myself? <laughs> exactly. One guy that has always followed me around, wherever I <laughs> was this guy. <laughs> then I phoned him up, I said, dude, I'm, we're looking at opening up a business and I need you to, to become a sales manager. He said, but how can I be a sales manager? I said, dude. You just need to rock up and be there. <laughs> I'll teach you everything. He said, but I don't know anything about sales and managing. I said, yeah. you don't have to know anything. Whatever I tell you, you just have to be a sponge. You suck so it yes. in. Yeah. And you just have to have that spirit of, I want to do it. And I sat on his neck. And whenever he doesn't come to our phone, him, cut him out. I said, I don't care. You get in the car now, you jump in and you come. He said, no, I don't have petrol money. I send him money. I said, for <laughs> petrol, <laughs> petrol money, now you have to come to work. So those, I forced, those were the days. I forced him to come to work. This business, was it still in the motor industry? Was it? Oh, it was a franchise that we got from uh, c So we were now installing trackers. Ah, okay. So we got, it was the only black owned c uh, branch franchise, yeah. franchise in, in the whole of South Africa by then. And... You know, all the odds were against us. When we opened the business, we didn't have the money to buy the franchise. And yeah. we said, guys, this is how much the franchise costs. We said, we're going to do the business differently. We will then, we will bring the sales. And from the sales, then you can take, take, your, that, cut, yeah. take your cut. And then, so they had to do a different model for us yeah. to accommodate what we were doing. At the same time, we went to... Uh, NYDA and what, what was it called? Yeah, so, yeah, youth baby. fund and we were promised that and that and eventually we just decided you know what these guys are not gonna fund us yeah. and we wanted to expand and open branches yeah. yeah and eventually those guys didn't fund us and I said to Henry I said you know what we're not gonna despair we don't care what we wanna do is we wanna do something that these people are not doing we went to, I said, Henry, you get a team, streetwise guys, they must go to all the taxis mm. that they see on the road show at the taxi rank. Their office from today will be at the taxi rank. They must come here when they bring the sales forms yeah. and everything. 
then we process and then we had an installation team. The installation team, your job, you rock up at the taxi rent and you're gonna find somewhere where the taxis you're gonna take them and then install your stuff. Yeah. That's your job. So my understanding is you saw there was a roadblock. Yeah. With the fender. Yeah. Point one. You're like a lot of people would have just stopped right there because they say, I want funding, I want funding, I want mm. funding. And that's, I think that's... And the, just give up and, and go. Just give up. Because that's where a lot of entrepreneurs are, is that they focus on the money and not necessarily finding a solution around it. Mm. And or, you manage to do that. Or catering to the problem. Yeah. And, then, and then we became, sure. we actually became really good at what we were doing. <laughs> because we were, we were now installing trackers for taxi owners on a daily basis. That's what we were doing. We, it, it we hit a market, business. yeah. And then I became the actual sales manager he was looking you for. A real manager. <laughs> I, ran a manager. <laughs> I ran a team, I brought the guys in and process this stuff. Proce yeah. put processes in, into place and we literally ran can, this, this business. Guys, like, can you see that it's not all about funding. If you can find the solution to problems yes. yeah. and look for those problems. And pitch because them. You found, you and even them. pitch them. Because remember, they were not going to do it. They were already saying, listen, you can't afford this. Sure. Yeah. So he went to them and he said, okay, but we've gotten the solution on how we can afford it. And eventually they couldn't say no because we were bringing them business. Where are you now in terms of business? What is it that you are currently doing now? Yeah. That is um, your day to day. What I do now, I moved from music, then went to the motor industry, then went into electronics of installing <laughs> franchises, <laughs> and then I went into construction. <laughs> then in the construction, I saw a gap because you know you you get people that want you, you want some stuff done, the tiling done or yeah. painting done, and all these guys that I would get. You know, they knew what to do, they knew how to tile, they knew how to paint, but they couldn't manage themselves. You give them money, they will disappear. They go in place. So on a Friday, Monday, they know they Yeah, know if, 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 if you, they can work the entire week, but if you pay them on a Friday, on a Monday, they're not Forget coming back. Yeah. <laughs> Currently what I do is, I do building maintenance, uh, plumbing, I do plunk, I, I do get down to yeah. the actual You actually plunk. get down? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. The thing is, if you're gonna rely on people to, to do stuff for you, this is, yeah. this is well, one thing that you need to know as a business woo. person. Yeah. It doesn't mean that uh, if you own a construction company, you must know how to do brick laying. But you must have an idea of how the brick laying must be. Yeah. And an understanding. Yeah. And an understanding of the whole demographic of construction. You must be interested in getting the 101 of construction. Yeah. But I think that also goes into, as a business owner, then you can have the quality control as well. Yeah, but also people yes. won't rip you off. Yeah. People yes. won't come and tell you, hey, this is going to cost this, what, 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 or it's going to take me so five days. Five days, why? It's something that can actually take a day. A day yeah. and a half. Yeah, day. because, you know, yeah. If you start a company, your employee number one is the person that will oh. set the tone of your business. Jeez, that is actually true. He will then, number two, that person will also set the culture of your business. We've seen it happen. Yeah. Not actually. you. Not yeah. you. Yeah. That, that employee number one. Yeah. He employee says, number two will come to your business and, and will see what employee number one is doing. And now there's a trend. And now it becomes a trend. Then employee and number three, we'll see what those two are doing. Yeah. Those two are doing, and employee number 13 will go with the culture yeah. and the tone of the business. Wow. So if employee number one is lazy, if you're not oh, there oh, and sits oh. and smokes all, <laughs> then oh, employee number two, number five, number 13 is going to do exactly the same. Jeez, you never think about that, eh? We're here today because this is one of our creations that we, we have sure. done. Uh, recently, I didn't want to take a house or a space that we've done. This yeah. uh, this is a brand new shop. It's Nala Kids Spa. It's one of the first one I think in the in the eastern side of Pretoria. Ever since it's open, it's been doing very well. People are actually intrigued by the the actual look of the shop yeah. design. Um, and you guys did all of this. Did you do the interior as well? The owner gave us leeway and sure. she said to me, you know what, I come from a different industry. This person, I actually designed their bathroom. 
They said, look, we've got 60K, <laughs> and we want to redo our bathroom. We don't know how much this stuff is going to cost, and this is our budget. I said, well, that's a very good budget. It's a very nice budget for a bathroom. I'll, I'll do a posh, but the, the lady said, look, I, I want to come back home and relax in my bath and maybe have a, 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 a glass drink, of champagne yeah. or wine or whatever and relax in my bath and just detox from my daily stresses and everything. Yeah. Then I said, no problem. I did her bathroom. A year later, she phones me. She said, dude, I want, I've got this burning thing in my heart and I want to open up this shop. I want you to design the shop from the bathroom. I'm not going to actually dictate too much. This is what I want to do. This is one or two ideas that I have that I've seen overseas. Mm -hmm. and, but I don't want to create a spa that looks like any other spa. Mm. It must be kids friendly. Mm. Uh, sure. It, it, it must also be user friendly for mummies that are bringing the kids. Mm. It must be, you know, everything must be accessible and nice and it must be must taste yummy and, <laughs> yeah. and then I said well if you want it to, to feel and taste and you know you, you go through the, the people must hear good music yeah, yeah, must be relaxed good. and mm. everything I said well it's so, fine so it must cater to all the senses all the senses You're visually yes. what it must smell and nice does. and the thing is it, it, it's, it's completely <laughs> aesthetically pleasing what struggles have you had specifically in this business it's not every day where you get a guy that says, come and build a house for me. Yeah. So, or come and tile for me. Yeah. So then you have idling time in between. Oh. Why do you do that? So that's so where... The time is your that's, Yeah, when I started, it, it was a bit tough because then you, you'd wait and not do anything. And at the same time, you have managed to work so hard to get that employee number one, number two, and number three, mm. which are hard workers. Yeah. So what happens when they're not working? You lose them. They're not start, getting paid. Yeah. They're not getting paid. You start losing them. And yeah. then the whole business now is in a brink of collapsing. Yeah. Of which we've been there where, you know, we go to a space where I was left with one guy, two guys. Then I had to start building again. You have to get uh, guys that are paying attention to details when, when we do yeah. construction. You know, when we paint, guys that are going to be clumsy with the paint and I paint all over the shop or someone's yeah. couch and remember we're working in some in most cases uh, other people's personal spaces yes, sure. and people have their wardrobe and their rolex watch there so you don't you don't need to get a guy that's gonna take someone's rolex watch down the whole profit that you made of twenty thousand yeah. now you have to buy a rolex watch plus Maybe the Rolex watch is hundred and twenty thousand. Yeah. So plus yeah. another hundred. Which you don't have at the yeah. Which you don't have. Yeah. So what do you do? That's why I say it's critical to have people that are hard workers yeah. that you and, know you can trust. That are loyal to you as a business. That are loyal to yeah. you as a business. That honest, understand yeah, yeah. honest and understand where you are going, and you need to always share your vision of where you are going as a business and. You need to get their buy-in of, of, of your employees, of, sure. of where you're going. And also, it's very important to get their opinion on the roadmap that you, you, you have set. Like, what would you say to somebody if, if they would like to get into a space like this? I think we, we need to remove our mindset from entitlement. Woo! We, we, have, we have something... <laughs> We have, we, have, we have an entitlement uh, genes in South Africa. Yeah. Uh, this entitlement goes way back, where after we were free, uh, I'm not talking politics, but mm. uh, we now have this entitlement of saying uh, people, owe us. people mm. owe us or the government owe us. And, you know, they need to give us RDPs, they need to give us jobs. Funding. Um, <laughs> I must be honest, my company is not uh, registered in the CSD. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I don't even intend registering my company there. Because I don't have time to sit and look at all these things and run around briefings and and now you go there. 
<laughs> and now, now I have to go and borrow Henry C63 just for them to... And, and pay somebody. And then pay somebody <laughs> under the desk. And, and, and In my line yeah. of business, I'm not paying any bribes to anyone. There is no need. Work from merit. There's no need. <laughs> There's no need because I don't have that entitlement of uh, somebody owes me anything. No one owes me anything. And I'm doing this as a legacy for my children. Mm. Yeah. When you're in the middle of the storm, you, you actually don't see clearly. And sometimes you, you just run in a direction you where... You another pair of eyes, yeah. You run in the same direction where the storm is actually going. And it, it, you just stay in the storm all the time. Yeah. And I've been in a position where, you know, businesses you start, sometimes it takes long. Uh, I've been in a position where my house was about to be repossessed and the cars and everything. Mm. And, you know, it, it's, it's like that. I'm not saying uh, I'm doing business and I'm making money and I'm this rich. No, I'm, I'm nowhere near my goals. I'm, I'm not even at the door. I'm still like far. It's still a journey. Uh, some, some storms are still ahead of me. I, I'm in the middle of the storm. But it's, it's how I get out of that storm very quickly. Yeah. And staying in the storm, it, it, it just demoralizes you as a person. Business is not for everyone. The best... That's important. The yeah. best startup is start business as a side hustle while you're working for whoever. Yeah. And if that story works while you're there, then quit your job and then run with it if it's running. Then yeah. if you can sustain the your, very your same lifestyle, yeah, your sure. lifestyle and the very same salary that you are getting from boss, if you can start your side hustle can start giving you that amount, then there's no need for you to go to boss. Mm -hmm. Then you go to your side hustle and then you, you take it to another. You become boss. You become boss and you take that into gear two. Yes. Where you double your salary now. Yeah. And then with that, once you have that going, just don't close off for the next opportunity and the next pieces of growth and opportunities as well. And, and don't close off for other people because you don't know what other people have in store. Sure. But it's just that thing of you being able to identify business partners, employees, and people that you associate with. And this thing of us uh, saying we're gonna get leads at IAPA and <laughs> uh, we're gonna go to top floor or wherever, I'm not saying those are bad. Those are places where people go and relax, relax and enjoy. But yeah. you, you can't go there and expect to get connections there. Those yeah. people are drunk. <laughs> yeah, true. So if if you drive drunk, you think you're gonna drive straight? Are you, are you gonna? make rational decisions yeah the next day the guy say ah, it may show me not negative yeah and then when I, you put your heart and mind to to that i'm gonna quit my job because this guy are autumn for tender yeah. and the tender is not dictated by one guy yeah so and that guy not that you do it exactly then then now you lost your job now you start losing your house and yeah and then you thinking about this sylvester guy arne sly arne and then and it's not working so pick your battles and pick where you find those battles yeah it's like thank you very much i think we can wrap it up for now and leave it there we'll definitely have you back on the show let's look at when you guys are launching the new business let us know and we'll have you guys back for this episode i think we can leave it there on all of the, <laughs> the, 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 the magic that you've shared with us from the show thank you very much for giving us time thank you very much for the the words that you have shared and the inspiration as well and i think a lot of people out there will benefit around you know the story that you've shared mm -hmm. so yeah thank you very much for that one man yeah. and uh, yeah thank so you much, so much. much to say, right? <laughs> <laughs> just to wrap it up you guys know how what to do um by now you should by now you should know i don't know whether we should carry on saying this but we'll say we it anyway should. unless and in case it's the first time you watch it yeah. so like follow share um, subscribe. Subscribe. Hit the bell notification. Yeah, so you can get the episode when it drops, yeah. and you'll have all of um, Sly's details on all the businesses that he's currently involved in and moving forward with. On that note, uh, one deuce. Two deuce. Double deuces. We out. out.